Hey, there we go. Welcome back there, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today is August 16th, 2019. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going there, chat room? I've got my Phillies hat on today. My Philadelphia Phillies in uh, Major League Baseball here in the States won a massive come-from-behind game last night. Uh... A grand slam, four runs off of one hit, deep in the ninth inning to win it. Come from behind, win. Unreal ending. Oh my gosh! If you have a chance, check out the clips. They're out there on YouTube. They're out there on ESPN. It is amazing that comeback. How's it going there, chat room? Uh, let's say hello to everybody who's here today. Um, Copper Beardy, good afternoon. Frackberg, great to see you. D.D. Walsh, hello, hello. Uh, Carol, uh, okay, Carol, nice to meet you. Carol Mal uh, Maligloka, I think I said that right. TNT Friesen, greetings and welcome. Thanks so much for the follow. Musical Bookworm, Eco Math is here. Hello, Portal 7. Hello, good to see you. Um... We have a follower goal here. We're trying to reach 8,000 followers before September 15th. If we reach that goal, I will dye my beard rainbow as a salute to you, our Twitch community, for .NET Conf and TwitchCon. At both of those events, I will have a rainbow beard. Every 100 followers that we cross, I'm going to give away a sticker pack, and we just crossed 100 followers last night. Thank you so much for the follow. Who was our new follower there? Uh, NetLayer. Thanks so much. So... I've, I've already got a sticker pack I've got to send out tomorrow while I'm what, when I run over to the post office. But we've got stickers like the C, Super C Sharp logo. It's kind of blurred out there because of the... It's, it's yellow, but it's reflecting my green screen. I've got the .NET bot. Of course, our rainbow-bearded Octocat. Rainbow-bearded Clippy. There he is. And our cool C Sharp bot. Every one of those stickers I'll drop in. I've got a couple other .NET stickers here that I'll drop in also. I've even got NuGet stickers. And uh, I'm going to be sending one of those out to Fixture Jake. Not transparent. You can see through it because of the green screen deal here. So, hey, Stelzy, good to see you. So, um, in about 10-15 minutes, we'll do that giveaway be because we crossed that 100 follower uh, barrier. Every 100 followers, I'm going to give out another one of those as we approach, uh, as we approach TwitchCon. Yeah, stickers, Sean. Good to see you. Uh, let me get some music playing here in the background, and we'll talk about where we're going to go with the project today. We had a neat idea yesterday that I want to come back to, I want to walk through and and focus on, and then see what we can do to finish up some of these other capabilities that we've been building here. Let's, let's get them done. I'm wearing my red cap today. I'm going to play red. This is music to code by from our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. It's been scientifically designed, it's been engineered to get you in the flow, get you focused on whatever task it might be that you're working on. So we've got all kinds of, uh, I've got about, I've got about 12 songs here. There's about 20 of them in the entire collection, Music to Code By. You can also get Music to Flow By at musictoflowby.com. Execute the music command in the chat room, get a link so you can download and check out Carl's music. It's amazing. I really enjoy it and use it when I'm working on projects here at the house. mtcb.pwop.com. Thanks so much, Carl, for letting us listen to your music while we're writing code together here on Twitch. TNT Friesen says, I got the music and I like it. That's awesome, TNT Friesen. So glad to hear it. Douglas Menke, good to see you. Yeah, they're NetLayer. Thank you for firing the music command there. I appreciate that. Copper Beardy says they're great stickers covering your desktop side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, C C17. Good to see you. Who was it? Did I see somebody say... Um, the cap looks orange from the green screen. Yeah, my, my colors shifted a little bit. It'll look better here when we get over to the next screen. I thought I saw Chris Bartow, Phillies, unfollow. Hey, you know what? You gotta give them credit for how they played last night. It was amazing. Welsh Ronaldo just resubscribed for 13 months. Good morning, Coders Smile. Good morning, Welsh Ronaldo. So, so very glad to hear that. 
Thank you for joining us. Bazinga. Yeah, bazinga. Uh, 13 months, and we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo like we do for every subscription, every cheer here on the channel. Uh, Coder Dojo is building facilities, training trainers, and getting folks all over the world the opportunity to advance their technological technological careers. Thanks so much for your support. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Bah, 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 bah. Just saying hi. Here we go again. Hello from Argentina, says Portal 7. It's good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I thought some. I thought I saw uh, earlier uh, TNT Friesen was coming in from Canada. Nice. Thanks so much for sharing. Raphael, good to see you. Good morning. Let me head over to the code. Let's take a look and talk about the project and where we're going to go today. See, it's a little bit better right there. All right. So I have a couple things here that we've been working on, we're working through. I think we finished fixing this one. Day view on our manager report crashing. We're working on this resource management project. This is a project that allows folks to key in their availability into an application and for managers to be able to see when people are available so they can schedule, schedule classes, schedule events appropriately. We're starting off building this application and targeting a nonprofit organization that provides a little equine therapy, a little horsemanship for folks that might have all kinds of different challenges, whether they be mental, physical, emotional, and it's a pretty great organization called Sebastian Riding Associates, and we're going to set them up with the ability to manage their volunteers' availability. Even though I didn't say the, the, the programming language name there, you're right horses absolutely so that's where we're going that's where we're working on today yep net layer the smiley face you see there that's sentiment analysis it's analyzing all the chat messages and it's reporting how happy the chat room is and of course the best way to improve sentiment in the chat room is the tacos command we've we figured that out with our friend john calloway there it goes uh, look at the tacos everybody loves tacos and sentiment goes up the arrow shows the trend. See, look at all the tacos. Everybody loves tacos. All right. So we're working on this application. We're using Blazor. And we're using Blazor in WebAssembly mode. That, that, was, that was a Dorito that went by. I like Doritos, but come on, DD. <laughs> um... Burritos feel left out. Okay, McNerdius. I feel you. I feel you. Okay. Um, and the, the emotes flying by there for subscribers. Oh, Lannan with his own emotes there. Very nice. Very nice. So, um, Blazor, of course, is that is that framework that we can use with C Sharp, with .NET Core, to build content that runs on WebAssembly. That means it gets shipped to the browser and executes native code in every browser, right? Firefox, Edge, Chrome, Mobile Safari, Mobile Chrome, it works in all of them. So we've been building and using this technology, which is really easy to use to get such a great effect in folks' browsers. So we have a list of issues, a list of bugs here that we've been working through. I think we're through this one, our manager report that shows when folks are available. We're not quite done it yet, but the daily views that we make appear there, I think we have fixed. We'll go through and take a look at that. This one about expanding schedules on the server, I'm nearly positive we're done that as well. Space Shot just resubscribed for 13 months. Support your local Coda Dojo. Thank you so much, Space Shot. 13 months, over a year, you've got the loyalty badge with the propeller on the head. It's the rainbow hat. Thank you so much. Absolutely, we will make a donation to Coder Dojo. Thank you very much for joining us. All right. Uh, everybody who works with JavaScript will probably eventually need equine therapy. I said it. I said it. Um, all right. Oh, they do Coder Dojo at the Chester County, in Chester County at the Exton Library. Very cool. That's near me. All right. 
So we're working through a couple of these issues. I want to check in on uh, some of these because I think we've we, I, I think we've fixed some of these data entry for schedules. I'm nearly positive we fixed a couple days ago. And th these data entry bits here, I think we fixed some of these and it should get us closer. Closing these out should get us a little bit closer to our, to our goal of being able to ship an initial availability report. Pac-Man Jr. just resubscribed for 17 months. Hello, Sharp Fritz. Hi, chat. 17 months? Are you kidding me? Wow! Thank you so much, Pac-Man Jr. I really appreciate that. Oh my goodness. Um, it will make another donation to Coder Dojo. Thank you very, very much for that. 17 months of subscriptions. Uh, Lampy Web Dev says, I love JavaScript. It, that's great. I, I encourage folks, find a technology that you enjoy. Embrace it. Have fun with it. We like to poke a little bit of fun at JavaScript. So, check out the hype. Look at all the, look at all the emotes going flying. So, I want to check in on, so what, where I want to start today is I want to check in on a couple of these issues that we have labeled as bugs. See if we can close them out get into the 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 crux of our of our stream today and i want to do uh deep linking on some of these yeah look at all those emotes flying by thank you johan um i want to look at deep linking on the manager report so that you can actually link to a specific week and be able to share that appropriately so you can send a link to other managers that say oh look at what's happening in september Look what's happening in October so that in the future you can be able to pull that data apart and look at it. All right. So first things first, before we start looking at these, I've got some stickers to give away because we crossed a hundred follower uh, milestone overnight, right? Every hundred followers, we're going to give away a sticker pack. I have, of course, the Lash tool sitting here running. Here's what I want you to do. Execute the here command, exclamation point here, just like that, in the chat room. And that'll put you in the list of participants if you would like to win a sticker pack. There you go. Anybody can win. I don't care where you are. I will ship stickers to you. We shipped stickers to, to the UK. We shipped stickers to, to Russia uh, two weeks ago. I will ship them anywhere in the world as long as you have a mailing address. I have some stickers that we're going to send out to our friend Fixter Jake. He won last week. It's not rigged yet. How can you say it's rigged, C17? I didn't even hit the button yet. Um, so, my goodness. Already claiming it's rigged. I don't know. What? 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 I want to be able to send these to anybody. I want to be able to send them to... I want rustlers. Cutthroats. Murderers. Bounty hunters, desperados, mugs, pugs, thugs, nitwits, halfwits, dimwits, vipers, snipers, con men, agents, bandits, muckers, buggerers, bushwhackers, hornswagglers, horse thieves, train robbers, bank robbers, diggers, diggers, and messages. I think there were some bad words in there. All right, everybody in? Uh, I cannot send them to the moon, Janescu. No. No, I did edit that a little bit. Um, if you're familiar with that movie, yes, I did cut out some 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 language that isn't exactly acceptable these days. Um, yes, blazing saddles indeed. Exclamation point here! I'll give it just a few more seconds, and and we'll we'll spin this. We'll see who we can get send some stickers to. These days, yes, right? Uh, blazing saddles is is more than forty years old, and some of the words in in that uh in that diatribe were uh, a little coarse and i like to be a little um i like to be family friendly here not there it's here exclamation point here dev lead oh my goodness i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do all right let's do this Oh, 
Oh my goodness. And... Stealthy! Congratulations. Oh yeah, we're going to give away a sticker pack. Stealthy! I, I know, Frackberg, it just missed you. Oh my goodness. Uh... Uh, let's see. There we go. I just dropped you a whisper. Reply to that with your mailing address, and we'll send you out a sticker pack. I'm going to be heading to the to the post office this weekend, and I'll finally be able to get that shipped out. Thank you so much. Yeah, you won, Stelzy. Congratulations. Um, see, there's even a... See, I could even do this, right? Ooh, I could share that. Um, it's, it's stickers. If it, when we have bigger prizes, I'll share those, but yes. So there you go. You enjoy the near misses. Don't tell Frackberg. <laughs> Cause it just missed ticking over. Oh my goodness. When we hit 7,400, I will give away another sticker pack. We'll make sure that we send those out. All right. So tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your pets, sign up for Twitch. Click through and follow us, and we will uh, we'll have another giveaway. We'll do some more fun stuff here on stream. Okay, so this project, let's actually put this in the project command so everybody can get this. We need to get that sentiment increasing. Uh, it's, it's on its way up. It's above 70. That's pretty good. Uh, Jeff is uh, working on deep linking content with blazer in the resource management project and there's the link there you go hey lucky number seven you just missed just missed our um what's it called you know our thing did you, you just missed the sticker giveaway tacos for life hey frankus no you're not helping not helping at all no Think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? No, you don't. Meetings, meetings, meetings. So, can I share something? Can I share something with with you, chat room? That I'm kind of proud of. That the um, our friends on the live coders team know that this is coming. Um, I've designed a team jersey for the live coders. Look at that! Sponsored by our friends at Content Lab IO. I'm getting these printed up and we're going to have every one of the members of the Live Coders who wants to have a jersey, they're going to get their own with their channel name on the back. We're going to hand them out at TwitchCon. And uh, I am so excited to share this with, with the team. This is something I've been working on for the better part of two three months our friend uh our friend dd walsh helped us out a lot with this thank you so much dd um for for your help and your team's help there at mobilize.net it looks I, I am so thrilled with the logo the font the way this turned out um and uh, no logo on the right shoulder no nope content lab paid for the paid for the right to be the only sponsor logo on here and uh, we've got a Twitch logo on the one side, but channel names will be on the back. Really, really cool. And like I said, I am, I am so excited to share these with the team. I'm giving them out to everybody who's on the team as of right now at TwitchCon. Very, very cool stuff. I am so excited that I get to share that with, with our team. And I wanted to share that with you, chat room. Um, and I'm... This is something that's not going to be a one-time thing. I want to do this every year for TwitchCon. I want to make sure that, that we recognize the folks on the Life Coders team. It's my way to say thank you. Thank you for continuing to grow development technology here on Twitch. Learning education is something that should be accessible to everybody. And we're doing enough here to encourage folks and get them the knowledge they need. Folks like Lucky Number 7 there in the chat room. And I thought I saw Lannan. Lannan's another member. Yeah, Lannan. 
make sure you fill out the and make sure everybody on the team if you're here and you haven't yet fill out the form that i posted on the team discord and we'll make sure that you get your jersey um i'm looking here so lannon's a member of the team lucky number seven's on the team and it's uh even if you aren't going to the jersey to twitchcon i will be able to send those out we have enough sponsorship dollars that yes i will send them out to you i've even got uh, lucky number seven's going to help us take some back over to uh to europe to help out sending some of those out to some of the folks over there so we're not spending a huge amount of money shipping shirts all right enough about me let's get into the code what do you say Channel names like... Uh, you're killing me here, Janeska. Um, all right. Let's do this. Let's get in. Let's look at the project. Let's look at our source code and actually start working through this a little bit. I'm going to run the application just so I can do a little bit of testing on some of those issues that were marked as bugs that we need to resolve. So, here we go. So I'm using Visual Studio 2019. It's optimized that all the latest previews have great tooling for working with ASP.NET Core, for working with Blazor. Um, and I've got just a default basic layout here to start. We'll figure out some content to put in there. Um, wow, those were not what I was looking for in that box. Okay, terrific. That's not the email I used either. That is. Uh, and what was my password? I think that was it. There we go. Yes, save that so I don't make that stupid mistake I just made. All right. The issues that we had here, let's start at the bottom. Data entry for recurring appointments clears the date text boxes. This one, I think we've got fixed. <coughs> so I'm going to go back over to availability, recurring events. As we go through here, it's closing. So... A recurring schedule is something like Bowling League, right? I've got Bowling League, and maybe I'm going to start on the 1st, and maybe I'm going to go through. Maybe it runs to the end of September, and it starts at, uh, let's say it starts at 5 p.m., and it ends at, uh, I don't know, 9 p.m., right? There you go. And that runs every week on Wednesday nights, right? Add that to my recurring schedule and okay did it actually save the server responded with a 400 now I feel bad now I feel bad what it do wait a sec I've actually got that I've got that sound effect hang on what'd you do I don't know Uh, 22 passwords under github.com. Yeah, I've got a few. Um, let's try that again and see what what pops up here. Right? Yeah, I'm going to perform a request. You better believe I'm going to perform one. Here's a 400. Cannot deserialize the current JSON object. What's this saying here? Name value into type system time span because the type required a JSON primitive value to deserialize correctly. Blah, 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 blah. Now, is that in the save or the respond? Oh, my goodness. Okay. I think this is in the response that we're running into this. Because it does a put. Let's take a look at our source code. So, that controller that it's posting to is the schedule controller. And it does a put. A put is an HTTP verb where it's actually saying, here, put this in. You know, this is the new thing to add. So it's doing this update schedule item right here. And it should be... No, I don't think we got down to here. I think we, we blew up somewhere in here with updating the schedule and that bit. Voice activated sound effect panel for the next project, says Latjor. You might be onto something. That's not a bad idea at all, right? That way, whenever I say JavaScript, our horses will trot out. Hmm. Okay. 
This is a different issue than the one that is logged here. Data entry for occurring. I'm going to mark this as fixed. I should have closed it. There we go. But it's not saving properly. That's another issue. That's a different issue. Uh, recurring appointments are not saving properly. I have a feeling this is just any schedule item. Nidens! With your Twitch Prime, thank you so much, Nidens. I really appreciate that. And we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. You're going to get 17 different emotes just for using your Twitch Prime subscription with us. Twitch Prime, of course, you can get when you subscribe. Well, if you've already got Amazon Prime, you can link to your Twitch account. There's a little button just above my head here if you're not already a Twitch Prime member to link the two accounts, and you get one channel you can subscribe to for free here on Twitch. If you choose to use that on my channel, 17 emotes, you get the ability to cheer, and all your emotes will not cheer. Any emote that you use will go flying by the screen. That's a cheer. Whoop, whoop. Phillies. Thank you, Gary, very much for that for that cheer. Um, I'll make sure I record that. We'll get some uh, cheer graffiti there. But you get you get the 17 emotes. Your emotes will appear here on screen, and I'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. Thank you so much. Uh, not a problem about the Vetsu code. We're gonna be well, we're, we're gonna be making a, a series of donations. I think when we get into September here. We're going to have a, a, a charity day where we just talk about the donations that we've been doing here on stream. Really, really great stuff. Thank you so much. JAF1021 is here. Good morning. So good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. I saw the sunshine go flying by. Great to see you. Um, and you found the sunshine emote. That's awesome. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, okay. Schedules are not saving properly. I think this is, right, this is a bug that we just discovered. Look at all those emotes. Darn Skippy indeed. Oh, my goodness. Um, and uh, I'm going to mark this help, help wanted. We'll mark it as a good first issue in case anybody wants to take a crack at it. And I want to get this done in my, my initial schedule availability project that we're working on. Let me look at the other bugs that we have here. I should be able to filter by bugs. There we go. We'll come back to that one. Um, scan sec oh boy. <laughs> Handle schedule exceptions in the schedule manager. We need to look at that. Uh, did we announce how much we gave to Vetsu Code, or do we keep the numbers off the radar? We, um, I have the numbers. I'm going to share those and, and make the donation here on stream. I'm going to make it a, a big event, and we'll do that in September. So... Um, the, the, the numbers for Vetsu code was pretty big. Um, the number for Black Girls code was significant. I've shared it with Carrie. That was a, that was a really good number. And the number for Coder Dojo is tracking at about the same rate. I'm very happy with all three of those, but we'll, we'll share those numbers in a September stream, um, and, and set something up. So it's very charity focused for that day that we're all here together. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. And um, I, I am going to, I need to do this right now. I need to mail uh, Michael Jolly, Carrie, and uh, Robert Tables. We can get them on the schedule here for partner streams. Yes. Uh, oh my goodness. Give it up for cheers. Thank you so much for that. Yes, you can always give it up for cheers. And we'll make another donation to Coder Dojo this quarter. Um, Latchior says, I get ideas like that all the time, which is why I'm learning coding at 40. It's never too late to learn how to how to program. Welcome to, to the technical community. Um, you'll find folks all over the Live Coders team here that are happy to help anybody learn, point them in the right direction so that you can... You can grow your career. Hey, Death Packs, good to see you. Um, I think I've already got this handle schedule exceptions built. Let me take a look at this. Schedule manager. This is 
Um, this is the piece of code that actually analyzes our schedules and plays them out. It expands them so you have the actual dates and times when people are available. And I am handling schedule exceptions. And I think I have a unit test that covers that as well. Um, da, 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 test scheduling, schedule manager. Yep, schedule exceptions. So if I look at my test explorer, show me my tests. There we go, it'll show me the tests. Assuming that's all green, I'm gonna mark this as closed. Uh, thank you for, why didn't it drop the shout out? It should have dropped the shout out. It was doing these quite nicely, thank you. Oh, you know what? Look at this. The bot got disconnected from chat. That's weird. That's weird. I can type. Oh, look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Let's kick this over. Restart it. Hmm. There it goes. I don't have a shame command. There we go. There's the follower. Yep, now the bot's running again. All right, so all of our tests ran properly. I will come back over here. I'm going to mark oh this. My. See, even those are working. Um, I'm going to mark this as closed and finished. Uh, data entry for schedules does not currently accept dates properly. That, I believe, we've got completely working now. Right? And then we'll need to make sure it's actually saving properly. Right? So I can actually select a date here and a time. Kraus 4K just resubscribed for 12 months. Time flies so fast. One year, Crows! Oh my goodness, thank you so much for that one year of subscription. That's going to put you in a rainbow hat with a propeller. Thanks so much for, for, that, uh, for that subscription. And we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, Janescu, you keep triggering that com that question. There it goes. All right, so this one, this works. I'm okay with that. Go back one. Need to expand schedules on server. This is being done now. So I'm gonna close that, which leaves, come on now. Day view on manager report crashes. So our manager report over here, that's working. We got that one cleared up last time. We still have to finish filling it out, but it works. And so that leaves the schedules are not saving properly bug. Okay. Um, I want to take care of this deep linking thing up here and then we'll look at saving. A live coders merch store asks Lannon. That's not a bad idea. Dr can you drop that question into, into the team Discord? I like that idea. We can definitely do something with that. Um, and if people want to order more jerseys, I guess we can in encourage that as well. But we've got a sponsor paying for the first round. All right. Uh, give me the merch. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. Um, let's do, just taking a look. All right. I'm not going to focus on the, the save just yet. I want to get this deep linking discussion done on this right here. The idea is you can click these buttons and it will navigate back and forth on the dates. So we've got a little, we've got to finish the, the integration here so that when you do navigate, it refreshes the actual content that's on the page. Well, the discussion that we had last time, previously on Fritz and Friends, was, well, why not make that a, a deep link so that when you click that, it actually puts a date range up here, or maybe the start date of the week. And that way, you'll actually have a link that you can go to and share 
that says, here's this week in the manager report. Uh, Latjor is asking about pointers to great starter C-sharp training. Um, there are there are tutorials on the Microsoft Docs website. Svava! Now, why didn't it trigger the cheer alert? Uh, thank you so much for that kind cheer. Uh, mischief indeed. We're, we're working on our scheduling application here. Um, you learn by making and doing. You can... Um, we had a C-sharp um, workshop here on the channel. If you go to the YouTube... Go to our YouTubes. Our YouTubes? YouTube.com slash C Sharp Fritz. There's a playlist of the C Sharp workshop that we ran live on stream. Click through the playlists and where is it? This one from May 2018. Uh, no, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, no, no notifications. Uh, no, skip this. Thank you for the follow. Hey, I know that guy. That's a long time ago. Let me tell you. Um, but there are nine different um, nine different videos in this. It is a full day of learning. Check it out there over on the YouTube channel. Lannan asks, any new workshops planned for this fall? Oh, yes. I want to do an advanced C-sharp, uh, not C-sharp, advanced ASP.NET workshop. Um, I wanted to fit that in here in Please August. Scott. I know. That's going to wait a little bit. Um, I want to do a uh, Windows applications with .NET Core uh, workshop. Um, I want to do a machine learning workshop. I want to get into all of these things. Um, and we'll, we will definitely share those here on stream. Okay. Um, so let's pull this apart. Let's change these from buttons to something that's a link that does this navigation. Now... I'm going to go back over to Visual Studio. And I can I think I can close out some of these for right now. Close, 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 close. So this is our manager view. Thank you for the follow. Is that Ted Shred? Nice. Welcome. No, there is no front page in Fox Pro series, Michael Jolly. Gitter and Setter. Thank you for the follow as well. Do I have a WPF tutorial is a question from, uh, is that, is that optic? Um, I do not, I could use one. Um, but I'm considering reaching out to a couple folks that are, that are experts on the topic and have them come in. Um, our friend fierce kittens talked about running something like that. And she ran a, a poll around that topic. Um, fierce kittens is a tremendous technologist. She's normally sewing, doing craft things, art here on on stream um thank you for the for the follows and uh we're going to encourage her to do a little bit with that maybe help out with a little bit but yes it will include dotnet core for sure portal 7 oh my gosh thank you for the follows i'm trying to keep up with some of the followers shoe sun 333 thank you for the follow um yeah 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 for c sharp starters there's another channel out there uh I don't mind folks sharing their links. Fierce Kittens is amazing, absolutely. She's got just enough snark that you can that you know she's been around for a while and, and you can take her seriously. Uh, take her very seriously when she writes code. She's she is the real deal. Um, so um, so let's talk about this. This is a razor template that uses that makes up that manager view that you see here. It starts from right above schedule view down to the bottom here. And that's what this this page, this template is. So H3, that's an H3 for schedule view. I'm actually gonna change that to an H1 for accessibility and put a class of, uh, right, H, is it, uh, can I do just H3? So it'll format it as an H3, but for accessibility, it's an H1, right? H1 is the header that stands out for folks that need a little help reading their browser. Uh, who told you off once spicy condiment? Um, yeah, 
Fierce Kittens is is tremendous when she's doing her art. She's and whether it's sewing, so right now she's make, she's doing some cosplay that she's working on for Dragon Con, but making making handbags, making she's d done painting, she's done all kinds of things on channel. I'm always happy to promote those folks. Um, tacos indeed. There they go. Look at the emotes. Oh my gosh. I think I really started something with making letting the emotes go flying by here with the Kappa Gen. So we're going to change this up a little bit so that weak selector, we had them as anchors, right? As anchors so it navigates back and forth. And it didn't quite work properly. It actually navigated, and we didn't want it so much to navigate. But I think now we do so that we have that deep linking effect. Um, so we want to receive that information about, well, where are you navigating to as, as a route parameter? A route parameter. See, look at that. There, there, there goes uh, Rambling Geeks emotes. Hey, Rambling Geek, good to see you. Mm. Um, so route parameters will appear almost, they'll look like path things, right? So if we want this to show something that looks like 2019, uh, 08, uh, uh, 15, right? And that's the start of the week that we want to show here. That's not too bad, right? We can kind of link that and put it in here. Thanks for the shout out there, Carrie. Appreciate you sharing that. Um, oh my goodness. It, it's like a live coder sit in here. My goodness. Um, everybody's streaming in here. Hey, Brave Cobra. Good to see you. Um, And I'm, I'm, I've been, uh, let me come back to, to that later. I'm going to talk to the team about it first. Um, so if I'm going to have this navigate, actually go somewhere else, I need to receive that as a route parameter on my page. So I think if I remember how to do this properly, right, I can put curly braces here and I'll start to receive what that information is. So I think I, I think I can do something like that, right? If I want to do this as a route parameter, right? Let me go over here, right? Blazer route parameter. And I want to capture that. They heard I was showing off the jerseys. <laughs> Did somebody clip that? Did somebody clip the jerseys when I was showing it? Um, wait, hasn't date time a week of the year? Pro uh, there, um, I do have a beginning date, yes. But I want to sanitize, I, I want to make sure I sanitize it. So I want to make sure it lines up properly. You're right. Um, da, 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 page, different blaze route, right? Custom content when it isn't found now. Um, but I want to receive, right? Uh, the generated class is provided route attribute specifying the route template. Yeah, the parameters like this. Um, and it'll route in as a parameter. Okay. So let's make sure I do that. So it is selected date is what I'm receiving. So let's change this and let's call it so see work with me here chat room for a second. I can't just receive it into selected date because it's not I need to parse it from text into a date format because dates and URLs are crazy. So yeah, yeah, Carrie, check the Discord. There's an update to what they look like. Plus, I've got lady sizes. Ladies cut, not lady sizes, but uh, that were made available by our uh, by our partner. You know what? That uh, Sean, that's not a bad idea. To call this... Oops. Oops. Requested date, right? Um, will it handle... Uh, just put it like that and if I receive that as a parameter right and it's a string because it's being passed in right uh, requested date hopefully that maps properly you know what I mean um, I don't really care about the get I don't um, uh, model Selected date uh, to string now to string and I want to force a format here and I think if we force 
like that format, it's very URL friendly if we do it that way. Tell me what you think there about that one, chat room. But when it's set, so when it, we get bound to this, I want to make sure that it's not null, right? And I would, I'm going to end up doing a little bit of validation on this. Ooh. Um, let's say, right, uh, no, no, where am I going? Selected date equals date time, try parse exact. So I want to receive the value. The format I want is like this, right? Can we just do try parse? Do I really need? Or can I do just parse exact? Yeah. If I do parse exact, I think I just want parse. Right? Can I do that? Uh, no, that's not going to work. Parse exact, right? Stelzy might have a better idea. What's Stelzy saying to do? Would ticks be better? Nah, TNT freezing, that's a little bit much and it doesn't it doesn't end up being very uh, it doesn't end up being very uh, hackable, right? In the way that you can just change the URL and go to someplace else. Lampy says, uh, never seen Blazor, kinda looks familiar if you come from JavaScript. But then it's kind of crazy with that something syntax. Let me show you what that does in a second here. Um, so if I do parse exact, right, then I need uh, culture info in bank. Thank you. Culture, right? I can do that. Right. Oh, you, you won't need system, globalization, culture info, invariant culture. Cool. Um, I, I should have some error handling around that, but I'm going to just take care of this. Uh, he mentioned that daytime has weeks of the year, but then I need to also pass the year as well. Invariant culture for the two string. Yeah. Good point. Good point. I'm going to move this up into a using statement so I can, uh, drop that and good point chat room thank you there we go this says ignore any cultural inner uh, interactions or preferences this is the format I want and make it that way could be like year dash week could be um <laughs> week of the year is culture specific ah, you're right dev lead it can be Gitter and Setter asks why the horse sound. Um, Make it so. Be, so, um, I like to poke fun at JavaScript. Um, I'm a fan of the language, but um, it's. It, I'm also a fan of horses, and uh, it's something that makes it a little bit fun, a little bit funny, because when I do get into the language, um, I'm I'm all thumbs with it right now. So, makes it kind of fun. Now, oh, Z Lucian, the command is exclamation point. There it was. <laughs> so, um, why does get and set both do the same thing? Wouldn't set be good enough? Well, it, it's not doing the same thing. This is returning the selected date. Set is setting the selected date. So, just subscribed. Thank you so much for that for that sub. Twitch Prime, I really appreciate you sharing that here. And we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. Um How's it going there, Sinclair Nader? You heard from someone on VS for Mac team that Blazor Wasm support is coming with the next VS for Mac preview. Awesome. Yes, the horses are from Young Frankenstein. And uh yep. Yep, we've uh, shared a little bit about that. For Preview 8, you can bind culture. You can bind culture like that. Really? But that would be on a control. That would be on an, an element that you can do that ancient coder. 
that's not bad. That's pretty cool, actually. Let me put that cheer in from Carrie while I'm here. So I have cheer graffiti we drop in for every cheer that folks share with us on channel. And today is the 16th of August. Thanks so much for that. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Fantastic. All right. So it should bind that requested date and set it to the selected date and navigate appropriately, which means I can change these now from buttons to elements, uh, to anchor elements, right? So that they actually navigate, right? I could say href equals, um, I'm going to want to specify the requested date. So I want to go to, come here you. I'm going to want to go to slash manager slash requested date. So let's say slash manager slash, um, and we're going to say model dot selected, right? Uh, display begin date. Let's do that. Um, dot add days uh, minus seven uh, to string. And I'm going to put it in that same format, which was YYYYMMDD. Okay, so I'm working. This is a date object. We're going to add seven days to it and put it in this format. And yeah, that needs to be an A. Now, why don't you like that? Um, oh, I forgot. Forgot an object in the hierarchy. Good. Okay. So now I can do the exact same thing with the page forward button, right? And instead make this add days seven. And this will need to be a greater than. We could probably do some sort of a, a glyph using font awesome there, but and, and that would actually be pretty cool to do. Maybe you want to kebab case the date? Nah, nah. Love the channel. Great learning experience, says Z Lucian. Huge C Sharp and Core fan. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Looking forward to tons of Blazor. Oh, yes. Tons and tons. Let's see if this works and does what we need it to do. Add culture to the two string. Ah, you're right. Um, nope. Uh, culture info invariant. Boom. You try Unity for Wasm. Nice. Okay. Do we need the getter then for requested date? We don't. We don't really need it here. I put it there for completeness, really. It's still compiling. Let's see if we can get this to run. All right, come on, come on. Hello, Hello. anybody home? Hey, think with fly. Think. Womp womp. Rats. Um, Solo Hoslo, thanks so much for joining. Yeah, I'm not passing a parameter, so I, I want a default to be in there. Right, can I do a default like that? Can I do that? Is that a thing? Right, can I put a question mark there and it's an optional parameter? Aren't supported in... That explains it. You can do it. No, you can't. <sighs> All right. Fine. That's what I'm thinking is default the requested date to today, but it's not getting past that route parameter, right? If I try and do this as a optional by putting the little, little question mark on the end there, see what happens. But it doesn't look like it's going to handle that properly for us. Uh, let's see. Um, you know what? I'm... One second.
second here I want to see if we can get the font for that live coders jersey see if I can get that font that same font for the live coders logo for the for the channel names uh, can we use that for the for the channel name on the back there we go. Add another page directive with just manager. Oh, that's a great idea, Blazer Mr. Magoo. Oh my gosh. That's... Well, doesn't that just make things easier? All right, let's try that one. Good to see you, Blazer Mr. Magoo. Thanks for tuning in. It was right there on the docs page. You're right. Like, right there. Good point. Fine. I, I I missed it. I I I I Do didn't. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Evidently, I didn't. Um. Hey, TBD gamer. Good seeing you. Yes, Mario coins for you. Let's get some of those. There they go. Uh -huh. Back here on this, I'll click manager report. And it didn't go anywhere. What? Now I've done it. Unable to set the property value cannot be null. Nope. So I'm not handling right the argument being passed in. That's what I'm that's where my next problem is here. Right? So I need to do a, a check. Right. Uh, if uh, string is null or empty, so this is a native .NET thing that I can use to inspect if a string is null or empty, uh, and I'm going to inspect the value. Um, then I'm going to say selected date equals date time today, which will trigger a bunch of things to automatically configure the begin. Um, so, happy Friday indeed. How's it going? Uh, give it a default is an option. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? Thank you for the follow, Kieran TLC. Appreciate you joining us and look forward to seeing you in the chat room, Kieran. So, let's try that manager report. No. What didn't it like this time? Unable to set property requested type. Value cannot be null. No, it doesn't. Maybe, thinking out loud, maybe, right? Why am I getting value cannot be null on the set right there? Hey there. Um, well, it, it should be adhering to this one, right? Line 33, you're still hitting it with a null value. Line 33. Oh, I didn't exit. No, I don't want to have any space encoding there. Wadzy! Hello, welcome. Look at all the hype. Uh, do you have it all lowercase anywhere? It'll it, it'll find the appropriate uh, casing for it. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I can make it better. I can improve it. Um, so now if I mouse over these, um, oh, I've got an extra paren there in the URL. See it down there? Right? 
And actually, this going back, yeah, that's right. The URL has an extra parenthesis on it, right there. Rats. Let me rerun that so we can get it going. Oh yeah, we should make a thing that we can make it better, and it's the it's the ancient coders uh, little emote thing put together there. The uh, Clippy with the power up arms. Play that sound effect and drop that emote in chat all in one shot. Would be amazing. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see here. Uh, nope, we're good. All right. Click this. Now when I mouse over those, that's the right URL. And yeah, buddy. And then? And, and then I click it some more and it navigates back. It's not updating these. That's weird. Thank you for the follow, Bodolini. Oh my goodness, the follower train is hot today. So hot today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, gosh. Um, so that works, but it's not navigating these. So we need to take a look at what is going on here with these and, and it's not actually navigating that. It should have just trickled down and propagated and done something there. Yes, that is. Every follower gets welcomed. If they follow here live on channel, they get welcomed by Steve Ballmer. We've seen Ballmer more than 7,000 times show up on channel. Okay, I might be making that up because some people follow while we're not broadcasting. But we've seen him a heck of a lot here on channel. He was my first alert, and he's been here for every follower live on channel. So tell your friends. Come on over, click the follow button, and welcome, and have Steve Ballmer welcome them. Um, okay, so here, the... Ah, see, there he is again. Thank you, Toncheck. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. And it helps us get towards this goal. We take that over to another 100, to 7,400. We'll do another sticker giveaway. We get to 8,000 before September 15th. And like I said, I'm doing it. You've seen me do it here on stream, chat room. Some of you have been here for a while. No, I will dye my beard rainbow. And everybody, even the vice presidents that I interview from Microsoft as part of .NET Conf, and I know you're out there, will be sitting with me wearing a rainbow beard. True story, okay? If you go back to my build videos, I'm uh -huh. interviewing... Well, and, and then they, they look at me like, what the heck is this guy? At the build videos, if you go back, I interviewed a Microsoft vice president with my beard dyed purple, and I was wearing the blazer sequined blazer, my purple sequined blazer, and uh, she didn't know what to think of me. That was a, that, yeah, that was a whole thing. And uh, she still doesn't know who I am. That's kind of a good thing, I think. Anyways. Um, Alright, so I need to figure out why the day view here isn't passing in and starting with the appropriate date for us here. Well, I have interviewed Scott with, a, with that purple beard, and it was tremendous. Not that Scott, right? Because there's there's many layers of Scots. Microsoft is like a, a layered cake of Scots, right? And I, I work for two Scots who eventually work for a Scott. There's Scott, Scott, not a Scott. He's actually John. Not another Scott. And then the great Scott. Um, there's Julia and then Scott. Julia's... Uh, Julia's worked on every version of Visual Studio. Amazing. Um, and she was just in, inducted into the Ladies in Technology Hall of Fame. All right? There's something to be working for somebody like that. Tremendous. Uh, Rebrand Microsoft.com to Scott.com. I, I think the toilet paper people will have something to say about that. If a boss doesn't know your name, they don't know who to fire. There you go, Stelzy. See, we've got that figured out. Sorry. Okay, day view isn't showing properly. We need to figure out why my day view component here isn't showing the appropriate date. So when we say day display, right, we've got display begin date, add days, and it will column counter minus two. Yeah, okay. Um, so it should be working off the display begin date when it decides how to present this. So is day display 
is display begin date not being set properly? Hmm. Okay, so this is, I'm receiving off of the URL the requested date and I'm putting it in the selected date, which puts it into my model selected date. Okay, so I'm gonna hit F12 to navigate to that property that we're managing and it sets it in my schedule state, which is a shared object that has the the state of how we're navigating around the application. So this is being passed around to all of my components. And it, in fact, if you look here at day view, right, there's my schedule state. And it's got a display begin date in there, right? I'm gonna make this available to us here. Um, so I'm going from here, I set the selected date and it puts that on there, okay. I'm not sure we need a state has changed, but that's a good idea, Stelzy. Let's, let me think about that for a second. Uh, display begin date. Maybe that's what I need to be setting here, right? Where is, come on. See this, this is called code lens. This thing that's popping up here. That's going to tell me a little bit of information about where and how these things are used. There it is. There's eight references to display begin date. I'm going to click that. You have this feature available in Visual Studio Code as well. It's really handy to get all this information about every time that it's been touched, right? It was last updated by me 14 days ago. And how many changes, if there are work items that are pointing to it, it's pulling that out of GitHub for you. Um, and if there are any exceptions in testing, but here are the references I'm gonna use so I can peek at all the places it's referenced. And I can even see inside the Razor components where it's being referenced. Now, I see it being used here in Manager Schedule View, View Model. Manager Schedule View, view. yes. It sets Display Begin Date here when on Change Date fires. Maybe I, well, I don't have any references to this anymore. See that I automatically know just by looking at Code Lens, it's not being referenced anywhere. Ancient Coder asks, is that a plugin? No, this is a feature of Visual Studio. This comes with it. And it's really cool. So I think, I think when I set selected date, right? Because that's here. When we set it, I think we should do this recalculation here as well. Let's move that, right? Because that also, that also handles this situation if we get that event working, if we need to use that. So let me do this, put these like that, and some of that, and do this. Because, right, that'll, that'll work, won't it? Right? Um, do this. And let's see if that fixes it. Um, should we make this re method return the URL and call it when the link is clicked? I don't know. I don't know. Why return the URL? Just click it and navigate to it. Right? Specify here's where you're going. And right, so th that looks appropriate. Nope. Didn't set it. Rats. Rats. Let's go back to the code, see if we can walk through that, make sure I'm doing this right, because I'm probably not. Um, so this is setting the selected date, which is going to model selected date. Model selected date triggers, and it's setting my schedule state select date value. That is raising this. And we're setting the display begin date and end date appropriately here. So, thank you for the follow, Robert Langer. I appreciate you joining us. Someone get the rubber duck. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're we're talking this through and trying to figure out where this is, where we're losing something. So when these are set. It, right, those should be set and, and then our day view model should load properly with the display begin date. And then 
paint the appropriate columns, and then, load the data the way that I want it to be, and then, uh, it's all good at that point. But it's not. And you blow it. I blow it. Ah, uh, Limpy's asking about the properties, the per this right here, this decorator. So that's an attribute in C Sharp. This is available throughout the language. You can put this this type of hint um, on uh, classes, on um, methods, on properties throughout your class design inside the C Sharp language. We're using it here in our Razor templates to to indicate that this is a parameter that's being passed into this object from somewhere else. So the runtime, the mm, the ASP.NET Blazor framework, the Blazor framework sees this and says, oh, that's a parameter that needs to be coming from somewhere else. And behind the scenes, it's going to bind a parameter that's being passed in named selected date to this property. It's going to call the set on this and bind whatever value is, is set on that external property, or in this case, we're using it as a parameter coming in off the URL, okay? So I can say this is a parameter and because I declared it using this template syntax as part of the URL that this control, this, this component is listening for, whatever is passed as this part of the address will be applied as the value in the set here. And then, and then, Right, so value, this keyword value here, will be parsed and set to the selected date, which will trigger this set expression. And then, Hopefully it starts painting my parameters properly, but it's not! And now I'm sad. Um, I do state has changed here to kind of to try to force that day view to refresh not a problem lampy web web dev want to make sure that everybody's up to up to speed on this uh yes we do need that security janescu you're right we need to make sure that folks are authorized to to be able to access this but we don't have a page to assign roles just yet we might be able to do this very simply with just a a CSV of managers in our config file just to get started before we have a security page. Um, we do need to manage that at some point. Okay, build succeeded, but did you launch the application here? Maybe it did and I didn't see it. Nope. Here's another thing. The dates move on me, so I can't just leave my mouse there, right? We're gonna wanna address that too. Um, I mean, it is changing the URL, but it's not repainting the day view properly. Um, okay. Thinking this through. Think, think, think. Think, think. Um, <laughs> maybe let's go back to day view. Maybe we pass in the display begin date instead of having it on this. Maybe we actually have it as a parameter on this. Or do we? Day view start, it's right there. Right, day view start is, is that on our availability page? I might be running around in circles here. Day view, day view start is model dot day view start. Day view end is, I think those are times that it's using. But, hey, quality coder, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Maybe we can pass that in. And when we're in a day display, use that day view start as our display begin date. Right? We'll also need to think about the calendar on layout. Not sure. Snoopaloopy, Snoopaloopy, 
Um, welcome. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for tuning in. Add an event callback and use state has changed after the event is invoked by the parent. Um, I see where you're going, but I'm not, I'm not in an event at this point. To recap, right? This is the requested date is being bound at. It's even before on a knit, right? This is being bound um, as a route parameter, which is setting the selected date, and the selected date is setting the display begin date. We haven't even hit the on init yet. We're, we're before that. On init should pick up and have those appropriate values. We'll also need to think about the calendar on mobile layout, says Ecomath. Ooh, you're right. Ooh, you're right. Um, not a concern yet, but you're right. Let me, uh, let's get it working. We can get it working make it pretty right um so wait a sec day view every time i say day view i want to sing day man um right so the uh ba -ba -ba -ba. where is right yes campy fighter of the night man mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um I have a feeling display begin date is being changed before it gets here. Know what I mean? Um, let me click into my schedule state, right? So we set the selected date. I'd love to be able to put a breakpoint right about... Here. Let's see what happens. Maybe it'll actually trigger. I don't know. Or make it pretty enough no one notices it's not working. Uh, Ecomath, I, I like what you're saying developers, there. Developers, 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 developers. Oh my. Thank you for the follow. Uh, suspended again. Oh no. Welcome. Appreciate the follows. Let's see if we can get this to attach and we can hit those breakpoints. Figure out what's happening to our dates. Yeah, didn't hit it. No. Um, all right. Can I trigger Shift Alt D? We're gonna get the We're gonna get the Chrome debugging here. Can we get this to work? Maybe. So it wants me to run that let's see maybe we can get the debugger to work with blazer i haven't tried it with preview 8 yet there it goes navigating i need to log in right oh sure go ahead save it for this loading Hey, all right. Um, there we go. Yeah, we're gonna find out what happens on the initial nav. Oh, we're gonna find out. Um, all right, so if I go over here and I click manager report, right? I don't wanna be on those. There it is. Right, can I rip this off so we can put the two side by side? Right? Um, I don't want to be on day picker. No, no. Uh, okay, web client. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Friends, this is really cool. All right, so there's my manager schedule view. Yeah, that's right. I'm in Chrome looking at C Sharp. <laughs> All right, so I should be 
down here on the day view, right? And I want to see if I can put a breakpoint right about. I want to put a breakpoint there. Darn it! Can I put a breakpoint there. Fine. Let's start there, right? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. refresh. Hit it! Hit it! Take care, Lampy. Great to see you. Nope, didn't hit the break point. Nope, didn't hit the break point. Really didn't hit the break point. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm like broken off from it now. Uh, Shift Alt D. No, I need to do it over here. Uh, no. Yeah, the application does have the focus. Come on now. Loading up all the goodies here. Right, so if I go down into here, there we go. So it's not refreshing day view at all. Um... I want to see you. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. I hit a breakpoint in C sharp in Chrome. Oh, baby. Okay. Can I step into this? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this. Um, You're amazing. You figured this all out already. Yeah, I did, Hans. All right. Just step back. So now I want to set the display begin date. Ooh, wait a second. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. No, I don't want to see mono. No. Step out. Step out. Thank you for the follow, Kempy TV. Thanks so much. This, yeah, this is like kind of crazy. I don't want to be down in right these low level. Oh. Hmm. Um. On selected date changed invoke. Okay. So we are we do have an event that says here the event the date changed. Um, maybe we have the day view listen for that. Is the day view listening for it? No. So can we have the day view listen for it? And yeah, uh, breakpoints in Chrome against C sharp is very wild indeed. It's crazy. It's out there. Not something you would expect because you expect to only be able to debug against JavaScript. And we got C sharp. Okay, so something's happening in there where it's right the the it's not clear to me. I think Right, if we go back over here and we look at Did it close everything? That's fine. Let's close that. Um, so, where was it? Uh, here, we're setting the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so maybe we do select date so it fires that. Right? Um, it's already doing that. Oh, we need to do that first. But it doesn't have the display begin date and end date set. Okay, so maybe we take the value. Do, 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 do. Like that. Um, 
then we can do this. And if I go back over to day view, right? If this is listening, right? If we take a look at the view model over here, if it's listening for that event, I can force it to repaint. Well, this isn't, yeah. So where to go down here? Uh, no, day view, right? So there's a, there we go. That was in Chrome, yes. Yep, Snoopa Loopy. Thanks so much for that sub, and we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. Thank you so much for that, and thank you for the follow. Oh yeah. I appreciate that, and welcome to the community. Um, I'm going to set up an event handler for that. Uh, right. I should be able to say my schedule state dot... Uh, right. What was it? Unselected date has changed. It's gonna, re it always receives an object and some arguments, but what I want to tell it to do is literally, state has changed so that it repaints. Hopefully that works. Thank you so much. Let's see if that does the thing for us. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so. Make sure you check out some of the other live coders that we have here on the team. The live coders team. You can fire the live coders command there in chat. There's all a link to it just below me here. It's a team of 66 folks here on Twitch that are writing code, teaching about technology. We're growing all the time. I've kind of put growth on a on a pause, a brief pause here, while I work out all the swag that I'm uh, and and stuff that I'm going to be doing for for the team at TwitchCon. And even for the folks that aren't going to TwitchCon, I'm still getting them set up. There should be a less hacky way to do this. Yes, there should be EcoMath. I completely agree. Starting and... Yeah, look at that, buddy! It worked. It worked. Ha 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 It does the thing. It's navigating. I made it happen all by myself. Okay, uh, let's take a look at getfontawesome.com. Is it getfontawesome.com? What is it? No. Font awesome, font awesome. No, 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 you're all wrong. Because I think, Kieran! Oh my goodness. Kieran TLC just subscribed. Thanks so much for the sub. Twitch Prime, I'm I'm flattered you brought your Twitch Prime to us here, and uh, we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. Can I go through what was ro wrong and how I fixed it? Yes, and I wasn't using Verizon as a search engine. Verizon injected a DNS redirect. That's right, fossils, punks. Shame on you, Verizon. Shame, shame, shame. Shame on you, Verizon. Somebody clip that. Let them know how much we don't like that. So, here's what's going on. Let's make sure I get this. Let me talk this all the way through. Um, wonder if you have to subscribe from that event at some point. Um, well, it'll be destroyed because the object is no longer there. I don't know. If Maybe we need to put a dispose. Let's talk about this. So, the manager schedule view, when you click the link to navigate to somewhere else, we're going to receive the information about what that URL link is. It's coming in on the requested date parameter here on the URL. I captured that as a parameter and I set it to the, um, to the selected date. Selected date, this should actually just be like that. Um, this passes it through to the model. Okay. Our model selected date 
is actually interacting with it inside of our state management class, the my schedule state. This is quite dirty. I'm not thrilled with this. Um, and I see that about inject injecting some JavaScript into your pages. You can do that too. So we're going to put it in and we're calculating what the appropriate display begin date and end date is for this because we're showing a week at a time. We know that it's display begin date and end date should be a week for the manager schedule view. So we're going to recalculate those for the schedule state, set those appropriately and indicate we selected a date and it's the value that was passed in. That method raises an event that says, hey, the selected date changed. If any components are listening to this, you should know the new selected date is this. Well, that selected date is being listened to now on the day view. So on that application state, when the selected date changes, all I'm saying is refresh the, the screen. There's an order of events here that has happened. Refresh the screen. The state has changed. And that's all we're doing. So I think we're okay with that. Um, but what I'd like to do, what I'd like to do, chat room, and tell me if I'm completely wrong on this. Um, I'm not using, right? I have Iconic in here. I, does Iconic, I'm not familiar with the Iconic font. Open Iconic. Um, an open source icon set. Yeah. I, I want to get some arrows in here is what I'm looking for. Show me the list. View the collection. There it is. There we go. So I could use some arrows. I'd like, I'd like like a fast forward two of these right next to each other as one. Right? I mean, I could use just that, right? Or I could use chevron right, chevron left. That would work. Right? Let me zoom in there. Those are kind of small. Um, so I could use chevron left, chevron right. They wouldn't be too bad. Collapse left, collapse right. They, I don't, I'm not thrilled with those ones. Um, nah. Let me use the chevron left, chevron right. Oh, no, here we go. Media skip backward, media skip forward. I like those ones. Super Cuber. No ages chatter or not a little too young to worry about that. <laughs> oh. Um. Okay. We want to make sure everybody's friendly here. That's all. So... Uh, white land with the kappa. No, no kappas here. We don't need to put a kappa in this. So I think I'm going to use this. Media skip forward and media skip backward. So I can put a class... Uh, not the image. Is it... Which one do I have? I think it's this one. Let me see if what happens if I use that one. Uh, can I go over here? Can I click on this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for the follow, Diego Dev. Welcome. Oh, thank you for the Verizon shame, Ancient Coder. I appreciate that. So if I drop that in, no, that doesn't work. Interesting that it escaped it, too. Right? Like, I'm injecting HTML into my own page in my local browser. Why is it... Right? <laughs> Thank you for the follow, the Ponderer. Welcome. Great to meet you. Appreciate you joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. What if I just put this class? Can I just put this class? Right? Can we just do that? <gasps> Don't do that. Get rid of this. And can I go? No! Rats. 
I want to add a class here. Say class. Yeah, that worked. All right. So I'll use those classes. Okay, okay. I'm feeling good about this. Feeling good. And you should too. So, yeah, look at that. Uh, oh, I've got those backwards, don't I? There we go. Now it'll look good. Uh, I need an ARIA label or a visibility hidden text. Um, okay. Let's put one of those on here. Not level. Um, it's already starting. That's fine. Uh, go back a week. Right, we need to explain this for accessibility reasons. Um, go forward a week. There we go. Uh, let's see here. What do I think about PHP? Ask Deponerer. Um, true story. I coded in PHP 2 for a while. Um, nice framework. Nice language. Suffers from a lot of injection attacks because it's interpreted on the server. But you can optimize the, the, the heck out of that thing. It's really nice. Um, folks that have built some compiling applications, compiling frameworks around it are really, really cool. Peach Pie, I'm particularly interested in because it takes your PHP and compiles it so that it'll run natively on the .NET Core web server, Kestrel. Um, so not bad. Not something that I work in regularly. I like .NET. That's me. You know, other folks can use their own. Um... Uh, Kizzy asks, have I considered using brackets.io? So brackets, of course, is an open source text editor that understands web design a little bit. Um, a lot of the features that you look for in brackets are available in Visual Studio Code. A lot of these um, features are available there as well. I would use Visual Studio Code if I wanted to be in a very text editor focused um, environment. Um, I like Visual Studio, full Visual Studio. There, You can get the Community Edition free. Uh, of course, Visual Studio Code is open source and always free. Uh, those are my preferences. I haven't tried brackets. Maybe we'll try brackets one day here on stream and see a little bit more about that. Um, so that should have, there we go. Um, oh, that other thing is already in there. Thank you for the follow, Kizzy. I appreciate you joining us. Um, and it was great seeing you in the chat room. And uh, I hope, you, hope you're around some more. So there we go. That'll still be there. And they're blue buttons right now. Um, we can figure out making them look better later. But they're navigating. Oh, and they've got an underline under them when I click. We can do some CSS to clean that up, right? Right? So if it this is weak selector OI. So if I say, well, I could just say weak selector A, couldn't I? To clean up that in our CSS. Let me head over here to, this is, I'm gonna put this in schedule because I have all my things for my schedule page in here. And then? Well, um, and, and then it should look better, right? Um, so this is weak selector uh, anchor, the anchor tag inside of it. I want to say uh, text decoration none. I think I also need to specify that on the hover and active states as well, don't I? Active, yeah, text decoration none. Um, but what I can do, right, um, is I can set the color on that. No, no. Right, and the color, let's set it black, right? And I can do some cool effects if I'd like. Right, so when you hover over it, maybe we make it uh, green. And when you click it, we make it purple. Right, I don't know. Thank you for the follow, Garor. Garor, is that Georgia Roar? Let me know. Thanks so much for joining us. Better add an outline. An outline? What do I need an outline? Uh, all right, now let's see what this looks like. We've cleaned that up just a little bit. 
There is some work being done to fix this inner loop is what they call it. When you're building and working with code and you make a change, make a little change and you want to test. Make another little change and test. That's called the inner loop when you're doing development. There is some work being done to simplify that inner loop. There we go. Look at that. You mouse over it and it turns green. And I click it and it navigates. Now, I think we need to also make this a fixed width so that it's always, uh, always available there. Some sort of visual focus discernment for keyboard users. Why is it? Um, well, actually, keyboard users, yeah, it gets to it. And it puts the outline on it. I'm okay with that. The weak selector, I think we need to... F uh, we need to put a, a width on that. Right? Uh, width. Right. And if we have 12 into this, let's tinker with the width of the weak selector. Uh, oh, shoot. No, it's not... Mm. Right, I want to fix the width of this text in the middle. I'm going to put a span on that. Oh, wait a sec. Let me show you a Visual Studio trick here. I'm going to highlight the entire line. Alt-Shift-W does a wrap width. And now I've got a span in there. So now I can say weak selector span. Right? And now I've got that that I can put a width on. Um, oh my goodness, thank you for the follow. Who, who's our new follower there? I don't see it showing up here. Duke Twitch. In Week Selector, it's missing the event in the last rule. Oh, you're right. You're right. That should be active. Thank you. You're right. Um, let's set this. Let's just start with like. 10 a.m. Right? Figure out what this. How do we remember all these shortcuts? Lots and lots of coding. And uh, I look in the... Yeah. Actually, I don't have a log. Mm. There we go. I mouse over it and it turns green. I click on it and it turns purple. Okay, so that span is still resizing. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. That span right there. Element span. Can I force that to like, let's go 20. No. No. Oh, I have to put a display block on that, don't I? Yeah, there it is. Thank you for the follow. Fake Zero. Nice. Nice. Welcome, Fake Zero. The more you use them, the more you remember. I, I can't agree more. Um, practice is the... Uh, right? And practice in repetition. There we go. Inline block will do it. And I'm going to want to then uh, text... Uh, yeah, text align center. So it's kind of in the middle all the time. So then, as I do this... Oh, no! Make it wider. There we go. That's better. That's better. I like it. Um, so what was that? Um, with 12VM. I'm just going to copy that. Paste that right in there. Fantastic. Have I checked out what happens if you use the navigation buttons, then manually edit the URL to remove the date and just go to just manager? This is what CH width was built for. All right, so I've navigated here, and if I take that out, boom, goes back to today. So maybe I need a today button over here also. I can do that. That's easy, right? Because we know today is... So weak selector, right? If I do... Uh, 
right. another anchor. Yeah. Uh, href equals slash manager. So it goes right to the base page. Uh, go to today. Get rid of that. So now I've got a way to go back. Um, yeah, today link. Gotta say, I really like the stream. Well, thank you, Fake Zero. Never done web development yourself, but really describe things in a good way. Well, thank you, Fake Zero. I really appreciate you joining us. Um, you have to ask me nicely. No, you, you just have to ask politely, and and everybody's cool with it. And you can chat here. There's discussion on our uh, on our channel Discord as well. If you want to check that out, you can execute the Discord command here, or click the Discord link just below and get a link out to the Discord server where folks are hanging out, talking about the projects and other tech things, if you'd like. Wow. Firth, is that Firth ZTV? Thanks so much. Appreciate you joining us. Never liked, well, that's not a go-to, right? It's go-to to, uh, how about navigate to today? How about show me the money? No. Um... Show me today, uh, right? Uh, this week's schedule. Huh? How about that? What do you think of that, Brave Cobra? Huh? Just today is too simple. This way, it's a little bit more descriptive. Let's see. Here we go. Manager report. There it is. Oh, and it's got the same effect as these things. Uh, rats. Okay. Um. <laughs> um. Let's go back over to this one. Let's make this a dot oi. Right? Yeah. So it only affects those. Right? Um, okay. Um, and I'm going to put a little bit of space here. Eh. Hmm. Yeah, I want to put a little bit more space so it's over, right? Style equals uh, margin left uh, 15 pixels. And we should have that lined up properly and we can start talking about loading the actual data now. Style it like a button. Mm. We could. I'm not too concerned about this, this styling it as a button. Having it as an anchor should be good enough. And it should have the underline under it because it, I put the styling back on it so it'll appear as an anchor. Yeah, let's close some of these other ones over here. Right back over to this. That looks better. Right, so I can go forward, click this and go back to today. Terrific. Just the way that I made it to look. And I don't know. I just picked colors just to put colors on those. We'll figure out what theme we go with later and put all the colors in one file. A calendar image with it, says Janescu. Oh, that's not a bad idea. No, that's not the page I want. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. That one. Um, is there a calendar? Yeah, we could do that, right? OI, OI calendar next to it. That's not bad. I think with that in, add a bit of margin between the table and the navigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Restless Narwhal, hello. Maybe hide this week's schedule if it's the active page currently. Oh, that's a... That's a good idea. 
That's not bad. I like that. Okay. Um, there we go. So, if, uh, uh, how do I know if it's this week's schedule? That if it's, um, if is less than uh, date time dot today, less than or equal to, right? And if the uh, display end date is uh, greater than or equal to, right? Uh, date time today. Oh, and I need to make sure that it's the date that I'm looking at. Otherwise, so now I need I need to invert that so it's it's the not on that. So I, I'm gonna cheat and just throw it like that. So now it should appear when we're not on today, and it, make it appear. Um, about the shortcut remembering, really like that in VS Code via F1 or, or Visual Studio via Control Q. You can search for any command, it'll remind you of the shortcut. Yes, very good point. All right, so here we go. Now it appears, I click it, and it disappears. Nice, nice. All right, we are just about out of time here together today, friends. So we need to fix saving the appointments, make sure that that saves properly. But um, going back to our GitHub over here. So manager view is just about done. Zoom level, this I wanna push out. I wanna push into a different project, this, this one. Can I change the project that it's on? Oh my goodness. Restless Norwal, thanks so much. Just subscribed. Yeah. Thank you so much for this sub. I appreciate you bringing your Twitch Prime here and I'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. They're supporting uh, folks building facilities and training trainers so that anybody anywhere all over the world can learn technology and grow their career. Thanks so much for the sub. You're going to get 17 emotes, and you're going to get to be able to throw the emotes across the screen here. Anytime you use them, all of our subs get to do that here on channel. Um, I appreciate the follows. Look at that. We've been pushing that follower train today. That is amazing. Love that. Um, this is the next piece we need to work on right here. That's got to be done here. Whoa! Just gifted five Whoa! Shots. Thank you so much, TBD Gamer, for those gifted subs. Uh, Ecomath, Angry Little Hamster, Entity Adam, DocRen12, and President Not Sure. Congratulations, you just got subscriptions. Thanks to our friend TBD Gamer. That is tremendous. Uh, yeah, all of you are going to get to throw emotes on the screen. We're going to make donations to Coder Dojo. There they go. And you're going to get 17 different bots. Rainbow bearded emotes, darn skippy eco math. You can throw that emote at my face now. There they go. Enjoy. Thank you so much for your support, TBD Gamer. Um, that is tremendous. Um, we are a long ways from opening a, another emote, but that's okay. I'm I am not concerned about opening emotes here. And uh, that's tremendous. Thank you so much. I am working on setting up the language logos as cheer modes here on channel right so let me take a second here and and just squirrel for a second um if we go to github.com uh net swag anybody can go here this is a public repository that has all the net foundation logos that are shared around all kinds of things there is um ba -ba 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 save the day down here check this out there are there's your c-sharp save the day logo that's i want the i don't want the blank one i want the, the big one right 
You've seen me with this logo. Right? That's that's terrible. No, 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 no. Uh, open that. It, why isn't it showing it here? Right? No. No. Um, <laughs> do we do this one and it'll pop up? There we go. There's the C-sharp, super C-sharp logo. I'm going to turn that into a cheer mode here so you can cheer and actually throw C-sharp at me. And I've also got F-sharp here that we're, we're going to do the same thing with, which looks very similar. I'm going to change, swap out the colors, though, so that it's a little bit easier. No, come on, show me the whole thing. Really? Really? That's, that's not right. Come on. Come on, GitHub. Come on. Show me what it looks like. I guess it's not going to. But there's also VB in here, and I want to grab the Python one so that you can actually throw programming languages. Right? There's the VB one. It's blank. That was the blank one. Um, right? If I open this, there it is. Right, but change up the colors and make that a cheer mote that you can cheer here in stream so you can cheer and throw your favorite programming languages at me. So, hamsters must be on break. Must be. Must be. So, yep, you got the SVGs there, but we will... We're, I want to get them spinning or doing something when they animate so you can throw them here on channel. All right, let's, uh, let's clean up here. I am at the end of our time together today, so let's clean up a little bit. We made a lot of a lot of really good progress today. I am thrilled with the type of progress we made. Let me open up my console here and go to the project. I do everything for with Git here at the command line because I am an elite developer. No, not really. I'm just used to it. Uh, let's commit these changes. Uh, fixed navigation and um, interactions with the manager view. Next time, we'll wire that up so that you can actually get the data in it. Awesome. I'm gonna push that up to my local version of the repository, but actually before I even push it over to the shared repository, let's, let's take a little bit of what we learned from our friend Phil Hack on Tuesday. I'm gonna rebase this so that just my changes are made available to the upstream. So I'm going to rebase this on the upstream dev. Uh, let's uh, let's rebase one, two, three, four. I don't want to rebase directly on that. I'm going to get rebase head four, right? So rebase rewrites history a little bit here. So we'll rebase head till the four. So, uh-oh, that's not what I wanted. Don't make any changes. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, I know. Uh, get rebase abort. I wanted three is how far I wanted to go back. Right? Yep, back that out. Three. There we go. There's my three changes. Um, and I'm going to choose to squash these last two. So I end up with one commit. There it is. Updated to preview eight. I don't need fixing the manager view. But I'll leave that as my two messages that I send out. There we go. Save those changes, and I'm going to git push force to my local repository, and we'll create a pull request to share that out to the shared repository. Hey, Mario, keep going there. You're not done yet. All right, back over here, and I should get a little indicator that, hey, you got something. There we go. Set up a pull request out to the shared project. Fritz and Friends Resource Management coming from my repository here. Uh, fixed the layout and navigation of the uh, manager view. Okay. Which addresses issue... What was the issue number for that? Anybody remember? Uh, no, no, no. Mm, no. But that's a good point. We need to do that. Um, I don't have one here that I can point to. That's fine. Create that pull request. See, look, it's... Yeah. Mm. Oh, no! That's fine. Squash and merge. Send it over. We'll fix that. We'll do a push 
force on that when we get get that ready to go. But everything's compiling. Everything's working properly. You saw there's a couple of green checks in there. When this gets over, right, into dev, we should be able to see the code compiling in Azure Pipelines and running properly. Yes, you can put those logos on a t-shirt for the from .NET Foundation. Anybody's welcome to use those however you'd like. They're free for anybody to work with. All right, friends. This was a tremendous stream today. We did a lot. We fixed up our manager view, so now it navigates properly when you click the forward and back buttons. We improved the way that those look, and we even set up so that it would do a little, um, it, it right, so that it does a little bit of formatting nicely uh, around the forward and back buttons, so we can navigate cleanly. I'm gonna set up here, and we're gonna raid a friend. Who should we raid today? Let's raid, you know what? Our friend Nick Larson is working on the JS 13K games making competition. Let's set up to raid Nick Larson. He's another member of the Live Coders team. Subscribers, grab the first line out of the, out of the com uh, comment there from the Fritz bot. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line, copy that onto your clipboard. We're gonna announce our presence and we are gonna crash our friend Nick Larson's stream. Are you ready, friends? because it, it's been a tremendous time together here today. Yep, there is a video on demand. You'll be able to find all the content, everything that you see here, as always, will be available on the YouTube channel. It'll be available in a few days. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. I will see you Sunday morning. We'll get together and we'll wire up data to this manager view, and we will be almost done and ready for... Ready for our first round of users. I'll see you then.